Hello again and welcome back to Arizona Adventure Park to our second episode or no I might say our third episode in the small world. In the last episode we have built two more habitats for um, the artvark and for the pangolin and um, now we're going to uh, have a look at what we have built or what I have done in the meantime. Here are the custom billboards um, that I have talked about uh, about in the last episode um, and I really am in love with it. Um, just let me know in the comments what you think about them because I really like them and uh, they give the whole thing such a different look. And I change them um, everywhere in the zoo and I'm going to make new ones um, every time that we put in a new animal in our zoo. Yeah, I also filled some more of the gaps. As you can see in the background, we put down another food truck um, for the um, coffee, fox, coffee, fox, whatever. And here is something I put down some statues in there. And my plan is to make this the gallery of uh, community members of honorable mentions. So if you want to have a sign there by any of these animals with your name on it, just let me know in my comments or come to my Discord channel and let me know. And um, yeah, I will put down a sign for you and you will be part of the Arizona Adventure Park forever. <laughs> just let me know in the comments or go to my discord how you can join my discord server um, you can find in um, yeah in the comment section I would have said in the description of this video just um, click on it and be a member it's pretty fun in there yeah but what we are going to do in this video is we are going to have two more habitats the one on the left and the one on the right side the one on the center is still open i would have said open for discussion but um, the discussion is already over i have made my decision which animal would go in there but um, yeah i'm not gonna tell it to you right now so you will have to wait for the next epi uh, episode to see what animal will go in there um, but the first animal that we are going to put in our small world um, is going to be the european badger um, yeah, and it's the first time that I see the animal and um, it's also the first time, of course, um, that I build a habitat for this animal. So, um, yeah, it's an, it's an episode of premieres. Okay, so um, the habitat is quite similar to the habitat of the artwork. Um, which does make sense because um, it turned out that the European Badger has a specific that um, also the artwork had. Um, you will see it in a few minutes because the European Badger also needs a bigger gate to the outside um, like the artwork um, does need. So the animals um, also weren't able um, uh, to exit the, uh, the indoor habitat through that little gate. Which again is pretty weird because um, the badger I think is... Um, yeah, it's is a little bit smaller as... Um, uh, not as... than the aardvark. Um, yeah, and should easily fit uh, through that gate, but um, yeah, never mind. So, um, yeah, we're preparing the outside um, of the indoor um, habitat and putting down the name sign of the animal as well. Um, and then you might see what I said in the last episode that I couldn't find um, a suitable sign for uh, for the badger and um, that I think was the point when I decided that um, every habitat, um, every indoor habitat um, should look the same on the outside uh, decoration wise because um, yeah 
First of all, I thought about this, which doesn't look too weird, but um, yeah, as, um, as these are um, some kind of lamps, I decided no, that's, uh, that's not what I'm going to do. Um, then I wanted to put down this cartoony um, signs and um, yeah, as well, I, I thought, no, this is this is not what this zoo is. This zoo is a very uh, clean and um, I might call it serious and stylish zoo. Am I wrong with this? No, I don't. I don't think I'm wrong with this. So um, that this cartoony bits uh, just don't fit. That that just doesn't doesn't work for this so um yeah i decided to delete it and put down these um, north african tiles um, in there as well but i don't know if i did that on or off cam so uh once again our badges are going to have a little pool outside um like every of our animals do have i think think at least that every animal has that no i think the fennec fox um don't have one and um also the meerkat don't have one um yeah um uh, never mind we're going to put a little pool outside um i'm doing that because i think it is always nicer um when our animals have a pool um to drink out of it um as to put down these uh, these water pumps everywhere. Yeah, and once again I put it down um, a rock plate underneath the pool so that our badgers won't swim. To be fair, I don't know if badgers do swim in nature. Um, never saw that. And... Um, Yeah, it's also a little bit sad because I never saw a badger in nature as well um, as I'm living in uh, in Germany and in a very um, yeah in a little village with a lot of nature around me and um, I already saw burrows of badgers but I never saw a, a badger alive um, yeah, sadly, I saw some uh, some dead ones um, on the roadside, um, which is not that uh, yeah that nice, but um, yeah, I never saw a live one. And also, we do have badgers in uh, in Germany. Um, badgers are a pretty rare animal to see in um, in a zoo. Because, um, yeah, badgers, um, I think it's because badgers are nocturnal animals. Um, you won't see badgers uh, naturally uh, in the daytime. So it would be very difficult for, um, for you to see a badger in the zoo, actually, if not um, in a nocturnal house. And um, I think for that... Um, yeah, they would need a too big habitat um, uh, for being an animal that you um, won't see that often. So I guess that's uh, that's the thing why um, there are not many badgers in uh, in zoos anywhere. I guess the only time I have seen a habitat for European badgers was in the Netherlands in Amersfoort Zoo, I guess. Um, they built a new area quite a few years ago for um yeah for uh for the european wolf and um also for uh, the european badgers um but i don't think i have seen them in their habitat yeah never mind i'm uh <laughs> i'm talking a little bit too much um, about this now so um Decorating the indoor habitat for the badger was quite a little bit difficult because I didn't have that much inspiration and to be fair 
badgers might look cute but I always thought that badgers are very boring animals so I didn't have that much of inspiration to um, yeah to build something uh, beautiful or exciting for them on uh, on the inside um, uh, in the end um, I'm okay with how it looks but um, I think it could have looked a little bit better but uh, yeah that's that's just my opinion Yeah, and I also had uh, some difficulties with the indoor habitats on uh, on this side uh, of the building. I don't know why, but it's it's the same with the meerkat, and it's uh, the same with our third animal that we are going to have in there. Um, they all live in different biomes, so I don't know why it was that difficult for me to uh, to have some indoor habitats like uh, like on the uh, on the other side, but um, yeah, somehow uh, I lost my mojo on uh, on this free indoor habitat, so um, I don't know why. I mean, uh, they they are okay, they look nice, but. Um, Yeah, they they uh, they didn't hit my expectations, but uh, yeah, that's that. But I already can tell you that I'm very very happy with um, how everything turned out in the end, and uh, with the end result and uh, the finished building, I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm very happy that it works like it should work and um, that it looks uh, that way that it is um, I definitely could go in and make some some additions and changes and um, whatever but in the end I'm I'm very happy how it uh, how it turned out and how it looks so yeah um, that's something I always wanted to do. Um, usually I wanted to build some kind of um, big cat house. Uh, something very city zoo stylish. Um, I always thought about it. Um, how to uh, how to build something like that, um, something you might see in uh, in the big zoos all around the world, where you could go inside the house and um, see the animals inside in um, very very plain um, and simple areas with tiles on the floor and uh, something like that. And yeah, I just didn't manage um, until today to to build something like this. Yeah, but back to um, what I'm doing right here. Um, as you can see, um, yeah, the badger does need the same gate um, as our artworks needed. Um, yeah, just because it is a ginormous animal and uh, it doesn't fit through a small door, it does need these huge gates. Um, yeah, like like a hippo. So. Um, when you have a look at the badger, of course it does need that much of space. Yeah. Yeah, but um, here we are. We finished the first habitat on the left side of the building. Our badgers are in. Our badgers are able to use the whole habitat or I might say the most of it. And I think they look really happy about it, don't you think? So just have a look at our new cute inhabitants. And we are also having visitors already. Yeah, 
So the badge has moved in and here's the change that I said um, when I put down the tile pieces um, for all of the habitats because I just was sick of it and um, yeah. And in the end it looks it looks uh, it looks a little bit better. I have to admit. Yeah, and you might have noticed this um, in the meantime. Um, sometimes the game starts a little bit lagging, especially inside this building. Um, because I think there's so much tiles that, um, so much pieces that I used in there, so um, that the game has sometimes. Um, yeah, a hard time to calculate everything. But in the end, I'm quite happy that it still is working and I can't wait to put this zoo um, on the workshop so um, that you guys can download it and um, have some fun in it. Um, I guess I'm going to upload it um, Yeah, after we finish the connection between the small world and the, uh, and the Cats Canyon. I guess um, yeah but let me know in the comments if you uh, if you uh, would love to have it on the workshop and if you would love to play with it um, some of you um, have told me on um, on Facebook that I wanted it to uh, have on the workshop because they really love um, how this zoo looks um, yeah that's that's definitely something I'm going to do yeah, but now we are going back into building some nice habitats and this time it's the habitat for the meerkat, our fifth inhabitant for, um, yeah, for this building. And um, so far the only animal, yeah, it is uh, definitely it is the only animal right now that is not nocturnal. So um, we already have the aardvark, the Chinese pangolin, the fennec fox and the European badger and they all are nocturnal animals. So the meerkat is the only not nocturnal animal in this house for now. Um, but I might tell you the next and the last animal that we are going to have in this house is also a non-nocturnal animal. So that we have the nocturnal animals almost all on the right side of the building and on the left side, the, um, should I call them daytime animals? <laughs> the day walkers. <laughs> okay. So, um, I decided we have to hire some new staff um, for our animals because when we do have six habitats in there, even if they are small habitats and even if they are very close to each other, it would be difficult for, uh, for our staff members or for just one keeper and one um, doctor to take care of all of the six habitats at once. So I decided it is better to have some additional stuff in here um, that they can properly take care of our animals. Yeah, putting down the gate for the meerkat. Um, and what should I tell you guys? This gate was just perfect for the meerkat. <laughs> Did you think they uh, they also needed um, the big one like the badger and the aardvark? No, no, the mucat was okay with it. And I just uh, I just um, sculpted a big hill um, outside because um, that is something like many of the mucat habitats and also habitats for. Uh, the prairie dogs look like um, they have something like this uh, this hill inside um, where the meerkat can um, 
climb onto and have a look around the whole habitat and um, warn their buddies if uh, if there's some bird or some danger coming up and um, yeah so that they should flee Yeah, but in the end, I don't know why um, my meerkats were not able to reach the top of this hill. Um, so I might go into that um, off cam sometime because I really wanted them to go all the way up. Um, and it might not have been the plants that uh, kept them from climbing up there. But um, maybe the rocks, maybe it was a little bit too steep. Um, I just don't know. I have, uh, I have to have a look at it and, um, as I said, go into it sometime. Because I really didn't know why. Um, as you have seen what I was building here with the rocks, there is nothing that would be too steep in the center of the whole uh, rock. Um, yeah, I just don't know why why they can go um, only to a certain level and then um, can't go on. Um, as I said, I might have a look at this. I also put down many plants again, trying not to put down too much, but um, yeah, I just um, couldn't stop. Um, Naturally, you won't uh, see that much plants in a meerkat habitat because um, the animals are um, digging. Yeah, they are. Uh, they are digging and they are living in uh, burrows, and um, so that might kill a lot of the plants. Oh, and there's also um, a sad story that I want to tell you guys. Um, that comes to my mind when I say that uh, the meerkat uh, are living in boroughs. Um, as I told you, I'm living close to Munich, so Munich Zoo is um, the closest zoo to uh, where I am living, the closest big, really big zoo. And um, Munich Zoo was um, used to having um, a group of meerkat and um, it was last year, I think it was, let me lie, was it September or October? So that the whole group of, uh, of the meerkat have died um, because one of uh, their burrows um, broke down as they all were inside of it. And um, yeah, um, I think that happened overnight, so um, the keepers didn't uh, didn't notice it in uh, in time, and um, as they noticed it, and the next day um, all the animals were dead. So that's very sad, and um, yeah, visitors left um, left flowers um, at their habitat and um, everything, and. Yeah, we're going to get um, new ones pretty soon, I guess, after the winter is over, I think. Yeah, but with this sad little story, um, I don't want to make you guys sad. We are going to put down the last planters in, uh, in our building. No, not the last. Um, I forgot that we already have um, one more episode to go um, where we put in the mystery animal, the mystery sixth animal. So we're going to put down two more planters, not the last ones. Before we are going to have our meerkat in our habitat. Yeah, and it's also some uh, sometimes a little bit funny. Um, 
I notice this a lot when I'm doing my custom um, education signs for uh, for the animals um, that the names for the animal in uh, in German and in uh, in English are quite different. So even if you would translate it um, uh, word for word, um, yeah, the names are completely different. So um, the meerkat. That is something um, we also call an animal um, like Meerkatze. Um, so that would be translated into um, a cat of disease, which is um, some kind of, um, yeah, of a monkey. So meerkat, meerkatze would be um, a monkey for us. And uh, the actual meerkat is called Erdmännchen in German. So like um, earth and um, little, little man. So that's something, um, yeah, something funny. And I also noticed this for uh, for some other animals. Um, yeah, but I but I just uh, I just can't uh, can't remember which animals it was. Oh yeah, um, I know, it uh, it was the lemurs. So it seems that every lemur. Uh, every species of lemur that is there is called lemur in English and um, they have quite different names in German. So the ring tailed lemur is called kata in German and um, the red ruffed lemur is the rota fari, so a uh, red fari. And um, the black and white ruffed lemur is uh, then of course the schwarz weißer vari, so black and white vari. Um, Lemur is um, is just uh, the name of the family in uh, in Germany where all these lemurs belong to. So we don't have a specific species called lemur. Okay, um, but with that being said, as you can see, our um, meerkats are in our habitat. They finally arrived. They are happy with what they have in here. And we are at the end of the episode. So I hope you like what you see again. Um, if you did so, give the video a like, show me some love, subscribe to my channel. We're almost at 250 subscribers. I'm sure we can get to 250 very soon. Maybe we already have reached it when this video comes out. So um, let's go to 300 right now. <laughs> so I thank you for watching and I hope you'll be back in the next episode where we put in the mystery sixth animal. And um, yeah, until then, have a great time. Thanks for watching and bye.